estimate accounting 25, operational leverage, contribution margin, and variable cost ratio. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, our LinkedIn group, MBA Accounting and Finance, and our reference is the Intro to Management Accounting Textbook, Chapter 2. Let me define operating leverage first, and it's the ratio of fixed costs to variable costs. And what, what it, this is getting at is, what is the structure of your business between fixed costs and variable costs? A highly leveraged company will have high fixed costs and lower variable costs. good example is banking. Banks have lots of employees, computer systems, infrastructure, bank locations. They have high costs and lower variable costs. So the problem is, for a highly leveraged company, is that a small change in revenue or sales results in a large change in net income. So there's less room for error because so many of the costs as a percentage of the total are fixed. A low leveraged company, and an example of this is a lot of service type industries, anybody performing a service where they're, they're not carrying inventory and maybe they don't even have a physical location would be a low leveraged company. Low fixed costs, higher variable costs. So you incur more costs when you do the work, but when you're not doing the work, when you don't have sales, you're not, you don't have a lot of money tied up in fixed costs. So the benefit is um, small changes in revenue do not result in large changes in net income. You can afford to have a revenue decline if you're a low leverage company, there's less impact on net income. The next two terms are, one is the opposite of the other. Contribution margin, which I think people are more familiar with. Sales, less variable costs. And I always like to put it another way. What amount do I have left when I take sales and subtract variable cost? What amount do I have left to cover fixed expenses and still generate a profit at the end? We'll, exp we'll expand on that here in just a little bit. Variable cost ratio is the opposite of contribution margin. It's variable cost as a percentage of sales. So what I've done here is set up a scenario where we have a bank, Republic Bank. We have a plumbing company that's pro providing a service with some fixed costs. And then we have an investment company. They all have sales of a million dollars, but you'll see that the variable costs differ quite a bit between the bank, the plumbing company, and the investment company. If I look at contribution margin in dollars, and I always like to distinguish between dollars and percentages. Contribution margin in dollars is, for Republic, the million less the 200,000, the plumbing, 500,000, the investments, 300,000. But if I look at contribution margin ratio as a percentage, you can see when I click on the cells, it's the 800,000 contribution margin in dollars divided by the sales in green. So it's blue divided by green, which is 80%. Which means that for every dollar that we sell, we have 20 cents in variable costs and we have 80 cents left over or 80% to go toward fixed costs and then our profit. So we can see in terms of contribution margin ratio as a percentage, which allows us to have an apples to apples comparison. The bank has a pretty big contribution margin compared with the plumbing company and the investment company. But what really hurts the bank in terms of profit is fixed costs. You can see that the bank has large fixed costs in comparison with the other three companies, 700,000. The plumbing company and the investment company, less. <clears throat> so when we take contribution margin of 800,000 less, fixed cost of 700,000, we get the profit of 100,000. And if I look at profit margin, if I take the 100,000 in blue divided by a million dollars in sales in green, I get a profit margin of 10%, which means for every dollar I sell, I earn 10 cents or 
you can see that the plumbing company and the investment company have higher profit margins, 200,000 or 20 cents for every dollar. 200,000 divided by a million, if I click on the cell, double the profit margin, 20% for, <clears throat> excuse me, for these two companies as opposed to 10%. And we talked about variable cost ratio as being the opposite of contribution margin ratio. That's what we said right here. Variable cost ratio, the opposite of contribution margin. So if I click on the variable cost ratio for Republic Bank, I see that variable costs in blue, 200,000 divided by a million in sales, is a 20% variable cost ratio. So when I look at costs for Republic Bank as a percentage of sales, it's 20 cents of every sale. For the plumbing company, it's 50 cents. For the investment firm, it's 70 cents. The challenge that you can see, to wrap this up, is that changes in sales for Republic is going to have a much bigger impact on profit than a change in sales for the plumbing and the investment company. Let's change the sales to 800000 and let's see what we get for all three. If I change the sales to 800,000 because of that large fixed cost at the bank, I end up with a loss of $100,000 or a 13% uh, as a percentage of sales loss. If I click on this cell, 100,000 divided by 800,000 in sales is a profit, is a margin of 13%, and it happens to be a loss. <clears throat> You'll also see that at sales of 800,000 for the plumbing company and the investment company, they're at break even. So the plumbing and the investment company can handle, if you will, a decrease in sales of $200,000 and be at break even. Whereas if the bank has a reduction in sales to 800000 they lose money. Why? And the big reason is the fixed cost here. The fixed costs really eat up the possible profit they can earn. So much more of their sales is tied up in fixed costs for the bank. And so much less of their costs are in variable costs. It's 25% of their costs or variable costs according to the variable cost ratio, again as a percentage of sales, where for the plumbing and the investment company, a far higher percentage of their costs are variable, which means sales go down. We don't have nearly as big a fixed income, a fixed cost amount to cover. We're in a lot better shape financially as sales go down. That's the end of Management Accounting 25, our Not on the Web series, additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube. You can find them on our website, YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete list of videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, STL Test is our website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.